2018. Could we have the roll call, please? Chairman Swift Kayata here. Councilor Backer. Present. Councilor Fritz. Here. Council Lynch. Present. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Moles. Present. Councilor Roberts. Here. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reports and correspondence. Is there any counselor who would like to update us? Councilor Mole. I did have one item um, as far as correspondence that I wanted to mention at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I've been getting a lot of calls from people. Uh, as many of you know, I'm running for state representative, but I am not stepping down from the town council. So I just wanted the public to be aware of that. Uh, if I'm elected to serve the town in Augusta, I will continue on in the capacity as town councilor. So thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else? Any other reports? I wanted to mention just two, pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry, John. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Councilor Moles and myself sit on the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee and the county has started its budget process for fiscal year 2005. They're on a calendar year basis, um, January 1st to December 31st. We had our first meeting a week and a half ago, I think yep. it was now. Um, uh, as presented by the county manager, the county budget is looking at a 2.9% tax increase, municipal tax increase um, for the county budget. Uh, we just had our first meeting. The budget process goes through December. If anybody's interested at how it's going or wants to provide any input regarding the county budget, certainly they, um, they can contact either Councilor Moles or myself. Are they projecting any specific numbers at this point? I mean, they're, it's just... The projection is 2.9. The projection is 2.9. Right. I, I can't recall exactly what, what that, uh, how much more that is for the town of Cape Rouge. Okay. They said it was, what, an average of $4 per household? That 2.9 increase, is that, is that, is that right? That sounds right. Something like that. Okay. Uh, we also did speak to the county manager and explain to him that just because he's asking for a 2.9% increase doesn't mean he's going to get a 2.9% increase. And if Pulaski passes, he better be prepared to share the uh, decreases with the town. And that he's going to be asked to come back with a different budget, uh, much smaller than what he's come back with. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have two items to report. Um, Maine Municipal Association had its annual convention last week. The major topic was the Pulaski tax cap. Um, it was uh, interesting uh, to see the, the various impacts that would have on towns around the state. And while I, I know that some of us feel that the impact on Cape Elizabeth would be significant, I learned that there are some towns in Maine that have a fiscal year that starts January 1. So indeed, if the tax cap were to pass, um, and they are in an SAD, a school administrative district, where they are already uh, paying in more than $10 as a tax rate to cover their school costs on January 1. They would have no money for um, municipal government. So just when you think your own situation is interesting, you learn that someone else has even more challenges to face. There was also an interesting session, and I'll pass some information around to the council on it, but. Uh, it was about uh, main right to know laws and other information on negotiations and, and running meetings. So I'll pass that around. Um, secondly, I've had a couple, in the last month, I've had a couple of meetings with the chairman of the school board, Kevin Sweeney, just um, so that we're keeping in close touch with what's going on. We're trying to uh, make sure the two boards are communicating well together. The meetings have been quite cordial and productive, and I expect that they will continue to do so. I know that the, the manager and the superintendent are working closely together and uh, we um, all will be hoping to move smoothly ahead with our various initiatives um, as both boards work to serve the public. 
I just wanted to let people know that was happening too. The town manager's report. Very briefly, I did want to thank the friends of the uh, Thomas Memorial Library. They had their book and bake sale about a week or so ago and uh, took in over $10,000 as a result of a lot of baking and a lot of used books that are going to be read by uh, citizens. So I hope everyone enjoys the books and they particularly enjoyed the baked goods. I hope they're done eating the baked goods. Uh, secondly, the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Unit, not the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Fund that's operated by the town, uh, recently received a bequest of uh, $51,000. And that check came in the last month to the rescue and is within the control of the members of the rescue company and uh, I'm sure that they'll spend it wisely. And I can't speak for them, but I, uh, I know they appreciate the, the citizen uh, thoughtfulness uh, in remembering them uh, in their estate. Thank you very much. It's at this, this point in the agenda where we have uh, time for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. If anyone would like to speak on any item that is not on the agenda, could they please come forward? I see no one standing up, so I say that there's no one who wants to do that. The next item is the minutes of our last meeting, which was held September 13th. Do I hear a motion? Move uh, for passage for, of the minutes as written. Second. Discussion? I had uh, one comment myself on item number 52, which had to do, which is on page 8. It's... Um, Approval of warrant for November municipal ballot questions. Ordered the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve the warrant for the November municipal ballot questions as presented. And I did not see that there was a vote uh, attached or, or noted on the minutes. So I just think that needs to be added. I believe that, I believe that was a 7-0 vote, but I can't recall specifically. So if we could just um, amend the minutes to add, to, to have the town clerk add those, that would be So. Uh, that was a 7-0 vote. It was, yep. okay, thank you. So if we could consider that a friendly amendment to the yes. motion and the second yes. Okay, great, and all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you very much. Okay. The next item on our agenda is item number 56, the Profudic Club <coughs> Annual Licenses. Would the manager like to comment or? Yeah, I just was briefly discussed at this morning's department head meeting and uh, everyone, uh, uh, no one had any objection to it. I wouldn't say they're all in favor, but they, they didn't discuss it. So we have no concerns here today. Okay. Yes, Go up here. Yes, I would like to look myself from voting on this item since I'm a spokesman member. Okay. Um, hmm. Do we have to vote on a recusal? I can't remember. To accept it? Okay. Um, to, to vote to accept it. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to accept uh, Councillor Fritz's offer to recuse herself? So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Okay, now the council is um, recusing herself. Do I hear a motion on item number 56? Councillor Lynch? Um, I move to approve the annual malt, spiritus, and Venice. Is that? I'm not even sure how you say that. Venice. License for the Perpudic Club. We know what it means. Exactly. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Briefly, I, I just want to thank the Perpudic for being a very public-spirited uh, entity in the community. Uh, they, in addition to hosting the town golf tournament every year, which is much appreciated, happened this past month. They also, uh, I think it's little known, but the Cape Elizabeth High School is a golf team, and all of the golfing at the Perpudic Club is is provided by Perpudic Club at no cost to the school department, uh, and that I think really you know indicates. Uh, the, the, how much the Perpudic does for the community, not to mention that the club is open for cross-country skiing uh, all during the winter, and uh, they're, they're uh, a, really a good citizen of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you for noting that. I'm sure we all agree in appreciating their service to the community. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? 
It's unanimous, six zero. Thank you very much. Moving on. Item number 57, which is a request to refer an item to the Ordinance Committee. Could we have our town planner, Ms. O'Meara, Maureen O'Meara, come forward and just introduce this, please? Uh, this is an amendment that was requested by Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, the business aid district was amended a couple of years after the town center district. And the town center district had a lot of new concepts in it. Uh, one of them was the idea of having mixed use buildings where you have uh, commercial uses mixed in with apartments. Um, when the town center in the district was first adopted, you know, there was a little concern, maybe was this a good idea, maybe it wasn't. Well, a couple of years later, everybody had gotten a lot more comfortable, and when we were rewriting the zoning ordinance, those concepts were integrated into the business aid district. Unfortunately, they were not completely integrated. Um, we had an applicant who wanted to build a mixed-use building in the business aid district, and while the business aid district says, has an explicit uh, setback requirement for multifamily, it does not explicitly make multifamily a permitted use. It says multiplex is a permitted use. It's the decision of the code enforcement officer that multiplex and multifamily are in fact two different distinct uses and therefore if it's not listed explicitly as a permitted use, multifamily is not a permitted use. So the fact that there's a setback requirement there, it just makes it clear that the intent was always to make multifamily something that was allowed in the business aid district, but we never explicitly listed it. So that's what this amendment does. It creates a definition for multifamily and adds multifamily to the list of permitted uses. Thank you very much. Um, is there a motion on this item? Councilor um, Fritz? I, I guess I have, um, I, I, well, I guess I had a question about what sort of proposal Mr. Fitzpatrick was, was going to be presenting, wanted the change for. There were no specific plans submitted to the planning board. Uh, what he met with staff and discussed was basically your typical mixed-use building where you would have commercial uses on one or two floors and one whole floor that would be devoted to apartments. So a multi-story building. Thank you. Is there a motion? Councilman I'll make Moore? a motion. I'd like to make a motion to refer this item uh, to the um, ordinance, committee. ordinance committee and to be brought back to us at a later date. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Fritz, didn't see you. Uh, I, I, have some, I have some problems with incorporating the multifamily in with, in, in that particular area of town. I mean, I think our comprehensive plan really says most commercial and business things ought to be located in the town center rather than scattering them out to um, an area such as is being proposed here for this zone. Um, it seems that multifamily, which is essentially a partner, I would say, is it, it's getting away from the services. It, it's much better to have it in the center of town. So I don't really think this is appropriate, plus we don't really have sewer provided to this area. I think the scale is, is out of order there. Um, so I'm not in favor of changing the ordinance in this way. So I will be voting not to send it to the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Councilor Moll? For, for the public that's watching from home, <clears throat> I'd like to publicly thank Mr. Fitzpatrick for coming down to these meetings. Every time he brings something before the town, he always shows up. And I just want to let him know that I really appreciate that. Um, it, it, it helps us if we have a question for him, and not, not all contractors do that when they send something before us. So. Any other comments or questions or discussion? 
Council McGinty. Well, as a member of the Ordinance Committee, I, and Chairman of the Ordinance Committee, as a matter of fact, I'd just like to, cl to clarify that this vote is simply to send it to the Ordinance right. Committee for consideration. It's not a vote whether we agree or don't agree. Right. It's to send it for consideration. Right. So the motion is basically to refer this item to the Ordinance Committee, and then we would receive their recommendation and consider the, it on the merits at that point. So let's move the question. All in favor of referring this to ordinance? Uh, six against? One. Okay, thank you very much. Item number 58. Ms. Romira, I'm going to have you hopping up and down here, but could you um, introduce this briefly, please? Certainly. I think your package has a map. I may refer to this bigger map over here. Uh, but the Murray's own gravel pit on Fowler Road, I think most of us are familiar with it in this area. And as you'll see, uh, it's in an area that is zoned RA, which is yellow and uh, wetlands. They also own a, well, the family owns a lot, but they have their contract office off of Shore Road, which is also in the RA district. Both, both uses are not permitted in the RA district. So they're, both of them are non-conforming uses. And further, the, the Murray family would like the opportunity to look at taking their contracting office and consolidating it with their gravel pit operation. Uh, so what you have in front of you is, is a couple of things. One is a map amendment to rezone this area of the gravel pit from residence A to business B. Right now, the only business B district is down here by the end by the sea. So this would be the second business B district in town. It would be immediately adjacent to the town center district. So some people may say there's some flow there between the commercial districts. Uh, the other thing it does is, of course, even the BB district, while it, it refers to uh, uses that are related to the natural resources of the town, does not explicitly allow the kind of activities that are going on at the gravel pit. So your proposed amendment also has changes to the business B district to make the uses at the gravel pit a permitted use in the BB district. So it's both the text amendment to the zoning ordinance and the map amendment to the official zoning map. Okay, great. Thank you for that introduction. <coughs> Do I hear a motion? Yes. Um, you want to go to one, Dave? Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Either one. Okay. Councilor Mole. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to uh, send this change to the BB district to the Ordinance Committee for review. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilor Fritz? Um, I'll, I'll be supporting this, um, but I'd just like to ask the Ordinance Committee, since I'm not on it, um, to consider providing some more uh, buffering particularly along the road. Um, currently, the ordinances talk about buffering with a, a budding one of, uh, on the property about the residential area. But that, from the way I'm reading it, it implies it might be along the, the abutting property line. Where I think right now that we need buffering along Fowler Road so that you can't see the, um, the, the piles of uh, gravel and, and earth material that is accumulated there. So I hope that you'll consider adding in something about that. I think just to create a better appearance along that road in the town. I think the Ordinance Committee just heard you. And plus, as, as we are all aware, the Ordinance Committee uh, meetings are open to any counselors who want to attend or any members of the public who would like to attend just to observe what's going on. Councilor Moll. I would just like to say to the Ordinance Committee that those little piles of gravel help maintain our rural character of the town. And they are a small town operation. I live right near there. I like the operation, the way they're carrying it out. I have no problem with the Murrays. They've been very good community members, so I don't see any need for any additional buffer. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of sending, referring this to the Ordinance Committee? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. 
moving along pretty well here. I know some people are interested in hearing the presidential debate. Some people want to go home so they can eventually watch the ball game. So I think we're making good progress here. Um, item number 59, which is a request to refer an item to the planning board. And Maureen, would you like to introduce this one again? Then we'll give you a rest. Um, I don't know if familiar, most of you are familiar with the Mary Cage's store right out the end of um, Broad Cove Road and Route 77. Um, this happens to be one of the properties where we're actually looking at a multifamily building, multi-use building. It fits in the business A district. Um, in looking at the property, the applicant had a wetland survey done, which is very typical, and discovered that there's a very large RP1 wetland that sits right in back here. And once you measure out the mandatory 250 foot buffer, there's no land left to develop this property. There's also no land left to develop any of the BA properties on the west side of Route 77. So one of the thoughts was um, an opportunity for the council to widen the opportunity just a little bit. Under the zoning ordinance, if you have a resource protection one district, the buffer that's required is 250 feet. However, there are four ways you can get the buffer reduced down to 100 feet. One is if the buffer is actually around the sand dune, and this isn't that case. Another is if the area is topographically distinct. Again, it doesn't apply here. A third would be if you're adjacent to a densely developed area. It doesn't apply in this area. The fourth criteria is if the wetland, the RP1 wetland itself, is less than two acres in size. If you will apply a 250 foot buffer to a wetland that's less than two acre in size, the buffer takes up more land area than the wetland itself. So we allow a smaller buffer for a smaller wetland. The suggestion is for the council to consider adding one more criteria to that list that would allow you to reduce your buffer down to 100 feet. And that would be if your property is located in a business district and it's served by public water and sewer. Um, the benefits to the town would be you're, you're, you've got very little business area. You've got a little business A district here. You've got the town center in the middle. You've got a little town, a business A district down here and a BB district down here. Altogether, um, your business A district is 0.2% of the town land area. Um, if your efforts are to try to keep the commercial activities in the town in the commercial areas, this may be one way to promote that by having greater activity and greater use of those areas by rolling back this buffer a little bit. So this is the request by the property owner for the council to consider making this change. Uh, the 250 foot buffer is a town created buffer. So there's nothing that you would, that you're required to do under federal or state law to impose it. Questions? Great, thank you. Uh, Councilor Backer. Maureen, the additional criteria that you've suggested um, can be adopted to permit um, a reduction in the wetland area. Is that a matter of state or federal law? The, the, the 250 foot, the only 250 foot buffers that we have that are required by state law are the ones around wetlands that have the very heavy black line. And as you can see, that's around a portion of Spurwings Marsh, around a portion of Great Pond, and I believe there's uh, one other location here, I think Crystal Beach has a little bit. But the rest of these areas, we are establishing 250 foot buffers based on a local zoning requirement. So the additional criteria as you described it is, I mean, there potentially could be other criteria for reducing a wetland. Yes. Uh, at least reducing the setback from a wetland, correct? We have four currently in our ordinance. Yes. You're suggesting a fifth. I mean, there could be a sixth and a seventh sure, that absolutely. we could adopt if necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to understand that. Mm -hmm. just, just to clarify, Maureen isn't suggesting it. It's a request from a citizen, and she's explaining it. Right. Yeah, thank you. Very good point. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Roberts. I don't particularly have any problem in reducing it. I think that 250 feet is excessive but I'm really not interested in doing it for just businesses. When homeowners are faced with the same problem, I would want to take a look at both reducing it for the residences as well as businesses if we're going to look at it at all. Any other comments? 
Councilor Backer. Are, are we referring this to planning? We, Is that the request? The motion, yes, to refer this item to the planning board. Boom. We have a motion yet. There's no motion yet. So the motion is going to be whatever somebody makes it. Well, I will, Lynch. I will move to refer the request of um, Mary Page um, to the planning board. Um, and the request, as I understand it, is to reduce the 250-foot um, buffer when a property is located in the business district and public water and is on public water and sewer. Um, I guess the, I, I think um, her request would apply to all properties in the business district, whether or not they are business properties. I'm considering the IRA as well, if you're looking at me for a clarification. So that's my motion. I think her motion is as she just stated. Is there a second for it? Second. So not including residents. It's, it, it, my motion is to include all properties in the business district, whether residential or business, so that all properties within the district are treated the same. Okay? Within the BA district. Within the BA district. And I understand, Jack, you're interested in expanding it to the whole town. Um, I'd like to just, for the purposes of this citizen's request, refer this off and then maybe have a workshop on the broader issue of the whole town. Council Fritz? I, I'm really concerned about what we're talking about, looking at here. Um, we ex went, we had a study of wetlands in this town a number of years ago that was extensive. I mean, it took I don't know how many years um, to, to map, to make decisions on, on what the regulations ought to be, um, to just change this at, at a request like this. And, and this is a significant change, 250 feet back to 100. Um, I think it would be an extensive imposition on that ordinance. Um, and the wetlands, it was all figured out based on soil conditions, what's really good conditions for building, uh, how it affects our wetlands and our, the Great Pond and the Sperlink Marsh, all of that. I, I just think this is a bad proposal and it would have great implications all over the town if we change the field. Uh, I, I want to be clear. I'm not taking a position one way or another. My motion was just to refer it to the planning board and to get their input into the citizen's request. Um, so no one should interpret it as um, a position on the merits, but I do think that when a citizen makes a request um, and it, it appears rational on its face, we ought to at least send it to the planning board and ask for the planning board's views on the matter. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? And let's move the question. All in favor of referring this item to the planning board? Five. Opposed? Two. Thank you. It passes. Five, two. Okay, next item is item number 60, which is a report from the Ordinance Committee. Council McGinty, would you like to address this? This is an amendment coming back, um, amendment to the Open Space Zoning Ordinance coming back from the Ordinance Committee. Uh, we reviewed this with the, uh, the uh, town planner. Uh, also, uh, it was reviewed by the town attorney what this does, it allows a, a subdivision that is being divided into phases, not being done all at the same time, but it was going to be done over several phases, to submit their completed, uh, the 
a concept level plan for the additional phases um, initially and then to submit a complete plan um, as they're about to develop each of the phases. And I believe that's the correct interpretation. It does, doesn't change any of the requirements um, for, of the open space zoning. It simply says that if you're doing a, a subdivision in phases, the out, the, the, outgo the, the phases that are not being completed initially, but the ones will be done over a period of time, only need to be submitted at the concept level. Thank you for that introduction. Do you have a motion? Uh, or Yeah, I would move that this be set for a public hearing on Monday, November 8th at 7.30 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? I just have a question um, of the planner, I believe. Um, when, say, a second or third phase came back for, for approval, when they actually submitted uh, the proposals to the planning board, would there, if the ordinance has changed in the meantime, would they go according to the new ordinances because they're making a... They, they would have to comply with the most current ordinance. Does it need to say that? That's standard interpretation. We've done that actually several times. Um, I'd be concerned saying it specifically in this provision because once you do that, then if you need legal opinions later on, there's an assumption that when you put it here, you meant for it to be different from the way it is in other places. And I'd rather not say anything here because that's our standard interpretation ordinance-wide. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if yes. you can let the yes. record reflect that I am abstaining yes. from the vote, I actually recused myself from the original referral to the Ordinance Committee, and as a member of the Ordinance Committee, I abstained from um, consideration at that level also. Okay. I apologize. I should have noted that before we started. And I also forgot my too. Okay. Item number 61, which is also a report from the Ordinance Committee. Council McGinty. This is a, uh, in response to a request from the Chief of Police um, in order to enforce the uh, parking violations or the non payment of parking violations that the Police Department be permitted to attach what is commonly called the Denver boot, which is an immobilization device on a vehicle that has three or more unpaid parking violations. Um, it also provides that in lieu of the placement of that immobilization device that the vehicle may be towed, that's at the discretion of the police department. Um, it also sets out uh, various uh, an appeal process um, I'm sorry it, the police department tends to establish an appeal process for people who receive um, parking violations a, an administrative appeal and also that persons the registered owner of the vehicle will be notified by regular mail of the non-payment of these violations prior to the immobilization device being placed. Okay. Thank you for that introduction. Do I hear, do you have a motion? Uh, I move this be set for public hearing on November, I'm, I'm sorry, December, December. December 13th, uh, 2004, mm -hmm. 7.30 p.m. at the Town Hall. And I'd like to just, um, well, first of all, is there a second? Second. I'd like to just note for the record, in case anybody's wondering, um, the Chief of Police has another commitment during our November Council meeting, which is why this is proposed um, to be discussed at the December meeting so that he will be able to be here. Um, is there discussion? Council Bassett. Although this matter did come before the Ordinance Committee for 
discussion and consideration, and we, in fact, considered it. The Ordinance Committee did not formally consider the language of the proposed ordinance as we have in our packet. So the first time that I, as a member of the Ordinance Committee, saw this specific language was when the packet was delivered to us for this meeting. Um, I would like to have the opportunity to propose um, some slight changes to the language of the uh, proposed section 13-2-6 dealing with the penalty. Um, is it appropriate for that language to be changed prior to the public hearing? Or does the language as it appears before us have to be the language presented at the public hearing? What's the call? It, usually if it's a substantive change, what is set for public hearing should be what's set for public hearing. If it's technical in nature, uh, not necessary. But you know, as, as was mentioned, the chief of police is going to be at the November meeting anyway. If you want more time uh, to to work on it between now and the November meeting, uh, this could be tabled to November, and you could set it for December. I mean, the essence of it, at least in concept, is fine. But I think that we could do better in the specifics of the language. We appreciate your. Uh, Be before anyone makes a motion to table, just because then we can't have discussion, I, didn't no, I, I was would going, like to withdraw that motion. I was going to withdraw my motion and move that this be returned to the Ordinance Committee for further review. Second. Does that make Yeah, that's fine. And I know we have a Ordinance Committee perhaps scheduled just a couple weeks from now, or maybe just yes. 10 days from now. Uh, maybe we can take it up then and have it back in front of the council for the November meeting? Yeah, if that's the understanding that it would come before us to, in, at our November meeting so we could then set the public that, hearing for that December. That would be my intent and Councilor Back is correct. We do have an ordinance committee meeting scheduled in two weeks, I guess. Two weeks. Does that create any problems from the uh, uh, police department's standpoint? Not at all. We weren't planning to, hoping to have the public hearing not until December anyway. Okay. okay, the the motion is to return this. It's been moved and seconded to return this um, item to the ordinance committee so they can take a little further look at it, work on the language a little bit. Um, any further discussion? Just questioning which motion. There's two motions on the table. Which one do you have yeah. to vote on Withdrew first? Uh, Councilor McKinty withdrew his motion. Did he? It considered it withdrawing it, but did you actually no, do I it? Withdrew it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I thought, thought I heard that he withdrew it. Okay. So the that first motion was withdrawn. The current motion is to return this item to the ordinance committee um, with the intent that the item would be referred back to uh, the full council at November, so that we could then hopefully set it for public hearing in December. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item number 62 has to do with a request from a citizen to amend the sewer service map to include 54 Shipwreck Road. The manager? Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Baretti lives at Free Oak Knoll Road, which is, if you go down towards Crunzy Point, you head to the left, and it's that little dead end street there. His home, which is on the, on the water side there on the right of Oak Knoll Road, is on sewer. He owns a cottage that's more in Peebles Cove, right next door to his lot, and uh, that is not in the sewer service area. Next to that home is, is that big new house that folks are talking to, talking about down in Peebles Cove. That is on sewer. But this, what this would do is make his, his house is legally put on sewer because there was another provision that was within so many feet of the sewer. You, you could hook up to it. But we're left with the situation that there's this one lot in the middle of the two lots that isn't on sewer, and by amending the sewer service lot, his his home would officially go on the sewer map, and this other property that he owns next to it would also go on the sewer service map. So uh, the sewer's there, it's available, and uh, he would like to uh, up to it at some point. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? 
Madam Council Chair, Lynch. I move that the sewer service map be amended to include for sewer service the property at 54 Shipwreck, Shipwreck Cove Road. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? There, there was a hope that Tree Oak No Road, which, yeah. which is on sewer, would officially be part of the map as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought because it was on sewer, it was on the map. Uh, it's not. I will so amend my motion. So it's Three Oak No Road and 54 Shipwreck Cove Road would be on the map. And One. is 52 Shipwreck Cove Road already on the map, or does that need to be added to the map too? It's already uh, connected, but it 52 is already on the map. Okay, so there's just the two properties that need to be added to the map. Okay. So Councilor Lynch amended that. Councilor Aye. Becker? Second. You seconded the amendment. The amendment. Okay. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. Discussion? I don't see any discussion. So all in favor of this item? It's unanimous, thank you. The next item is item number 63, uh, which has to do with a request to refer this item to the planning board. Uh, would you like to make an introduction? Yeah, this, coincidentally, this request from uh, the McFarlands who own, who own property down in the ocean on what's the name, Stone Road area, I guess it's called now, down on Angel Terrace, Cliff Avenue. I don't know the new names down there. Uh, hmm? Stone, Stone Drive. Uh, this request came in, uh, in, they approached the town several years ago, about a two, maybe five or six years ago. Uh, you know, interestingly, it followed some discussion the council had a month or so ago uh, when you were looking at different town owned land and you had a desire to begin to look at some of these lots that, that are under. 10,000 square feet with the thought that it, it reduces for all that, you know, it's still in growth and some of those other issues. Um, you know, to, to eventually really get that looked at and have it any serious look, it does need to be reviewed by the planning board. Uh, so, you know, it just seemed timely when this request came in to refer to the planning board. The other option would have, would have been to have the council to continue to discuss it for a while before it was referred, but, you know, it, it's one of these chicken and egg things which are First. My suggestion would be is you, you get an initial read from the planning board, although, as Maureen pointed out, they, they have already given some initial read in, in that they're willing earlier to discuss this, but in the end they realize it's a political issue that is ultimately determined by the council. But this is, I think it's an opportunity to get this in the arena of discussion and policy making or policy not making, there is such a word. <laughs> Thank so you. I'd recommend that it be referred to the planning board. Thank you. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Uh, I would move that we refer the request of um, John and Barbara McFarland to make their 7,981 square foot lot a buildable lot, referring that to the planning board. Is there a second? Can you ask for clarification? Yeah, in, in sewered areas. Uh, to get the further clarification, are you just asking that their lot be reviewed or the issue of smaller building lots? You're correct. The issue of smaller lots as set forth in the um, agenda. Okay. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Well, I'm, I'm just, um, I mean, we said we wanted to at least have a look at it to see how many lots there were, what the implications were. Um, and we didn't, we haven't seen the lots yet ourselves. And I don't know how big the impact might be. Um, so I, I would rather this request be considered at the same time as our looking at it. And then if we decide the political question or whatever, um, <coughs> then we send it to the planning board to have a recommendation come back. 
Okay. Is there a further comment? Councilor Mould? Yes, I just wanted to say that my recommendation to send this request to the Planning Board was so the Planning Board would review it and report back to us. It's not a statement of in favor or against this, this change. Um, as many of you know, we've been looking at are there ways to use up some of the smaller lots the town owns. This lot sounds like it's even smaller than, than we were looking at, but uh, I don't know. Perhaps, uh, you know, the planning board will have a different viewpoint on it. Perhaps in this case, it may be up against one of those paper streets that we've been looking at lately, in which if this, well, then this lot may have a future uh, if we happen to abandon that paper street. So, so I think that planning board is a good place to look at this and this, especially this particular lot, uh, deserves further looking at from the town. Further comments? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of referring the issue of smaller building lot sizes in sewered areas to the planning board for them to report their recommendations back to us. All those in favor? Six against? Carol Fritz. Thank you. Um, item number 64, which is the request to adopt a policy relating to the general fund undesignated fund balance. Councillor Lynch. Thank you. Um, I've had family business that has taken me out of town for the better part of the last month. Um, so I was unable to attend both the workshop um, on this and also um, had hoped to get together with the manager. Um, to uh, raise some questions that I had. So I was hoping, and the manager assures me this is not a time sensitive item, that we could table this tonight until the November meeting. So is that so a motion? It's a motion to, well, I don't want to cut off discussion, yeah. um, but. So they, we're going we're gonna to hold that, but is anybody going to look at me and tell me that they want to discuss anything or ask anything okay, before the motion? I'll move to table this until the November uh, council meeting. Okay. Then moved and seconded. There is no discussion on tabling items. All those in favor of tabling it until the, when did you say which meeting? November meeting. The November meeting is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item number 64, which has to do with the Goddard, the Goddard Mansion at Fort Williams. Manager, would like to introduce this? Just very briefly, it's, there's a wonderful report here from Oast Associates. Uh, Goddard Mansion is 151 years old. I think we, we, we missed it. It says to be centennial uh, last year. Uh, <laughs> That's too bad. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the, Shoot. The, the building has been a... Does Hallmark make a card for that? <laughs> Does Hallmark make a belated card for that? I don't know. <laughs> belated the <laughs> Fort Williams <laughs> Advisory Commission represented here tonight. The public works director is here. The in, a couple of engineers from uh, uh, Oast Associates, including the one who principally worked on the report, are all here this evening. And uh, this report was funded with uh, privately donated funds uh, from the Fort Williams Charitable Trust. Uh, their assistance appreciated. And you know, I'm not going to go into details in the report. The, the experts are here. Uh, I'm not sure if, you know, the suggestion will be that this be referred to a, a workshop. Uh, I don't know to what extent the, the council of council chairman would entertain a brief overview of the report and what would be like. Brief would be good. <laughs> I mean, well, I should, I sh that's just me. Does, would the council <laughs> like to hear a brief overview? I, I think we can just refer this to a workshop. Okay. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, one piece, if, if I might, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, John, but Go ahead. one of the recommendations is that within the, the funds that are raised within Fort Williams, they all go into the Fort Williams Capital Account. Uh, the, when the budget was approved for this year, 
there was $25,000 placed in the Fort Williams capital account for the Goddard Mansion. This report lists some immediate safety concerns. The uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission and the engineers think that these, and the public works director think these ought to be addressed sooner rather than later. You know, particularly once you document certain issues, it, it's incumbent upon us to, to work on them. Uh, I felt that, you know, there was some discussion, well, the money's already appropriated, we don't need to go back. I felt that it ought to come back to the council, particularly when you look at this full report, you see that eventually the building could need an investment up to 400000 although lesser things could be done throughout. Uh, you know, there is the desire on the part of uh, staff and the Fulton Advisory Commission to begin some of those immediate safety issues. In, in the big scheme of things, and looking at those, you know, even if ultimately a determination was made that the building would not get major renovations, would continue to try to keep it up as long as, as long as we can, you know, it's still important that those safety improvements be done. So they are asking as well, in addition to referral, for, uh, to use uh, up to that $25,000 that was previously uh, budgeted and allocated for the Goddard Mansion to uh, fund the, the, the most necessary safety improvements. Okay. Is there a motion? Councilor Backer. Well, I don't have a motion. I, okay. I think I just wanted to comment on that. If you want a motion on the table first before we comment. Sure. Because really, we're not supposed to discuss before, without a motion. Well, I'm inclined. I, I move merely that we receive the report. Okay. Not that we authorize the expenditure of funds immediately. Are you moving that uh, that we receive the report and not authorize, or are you just moving? I, I'm taking it one step at a time. Okay. Then the um, it's been moved that we acknowledge receipt of the report second it's been moved and seconded discussion all in favor Can I, yes i'm sorry i was gonna my comment was gonna be i wanted to do the emergency funding that the town wanted but okay but, but we've yeah. got we've got seven zero on acknowledging receipt <laughs> is there another motion yes i'd like to make a motion now uh, I'd like to move that we authorize the immediate safety issues be addressed at the Goddard Mansion using previously allocated funds from the Fort Williams Capital Fund. I will second. Okay, and it's been moved and seconded. Councillor Lynch, discussion? Um, uh, well, I would just like to suggest that um, when I read the report and I walked through the park almost every day, it, it struck me that we ought to put something up around those areas where there apparently is a safety issue to at least instruct the public to stay out of that area. It's not quite on point on the motion, but it seems to me if there's a safety issue, we need to. That's part of what the $25,000 would be used for, some of that fencing and uh, other things to keep people from being in areas that they should yeah, I, I was thinking, Michael, even before we get to the point of fencing and spending money, just to put up some red tape and stay out. Um, I realize that won't keep people out who are determined to stay out, but it might put the reasonable person on notice to stay out. Okay. We, I had that same suggestion when I was presented with the report. And, uh, the others convinced me that that, uh, that tape doesn't last very long and would be up there all the time doing it. But I, I had the exact same thought, so I, I appreciate that. We, you know, we try to get the messages out, but you know, we've had an awful lot of vandalism in the park uh, this, this fall. It's, it's been a tough fall, and uh, the God of Mansion has not been absent from that vandalism. We've had beautiful new, relatively new trees have been cut down, and you know, it's kind of sad, some of the stuff that's gone. Councilor Robert, did you have a comment? Yes, I would like to just acknowledge the fact that we have a very professional staff and they are recommending this work be done immediately. As much as it felt like summer today, winter is coming and the close on its heels. We need to get the work done now um, and not postpone it until it gets too cold and we can't do the work. Councilor Fritz. Well, I'm just wondering how far $25,000 will take us. How, how much work can we get done? Does that mean 
only a fence? Does it mean, you know, the mortar joints for the, the two worst places, which I understood were the walls of the tower, or, you know, what? Could we have town engineer come forward, please? Good evening. I'm Steve Harding. I'm your town engineer for, for Oast Associates. I have with me tonight uh, Kalen Colby, who is the principal who did most of the work on the project. And what I was going to have Kalen do is just briefly go through what we're proposing to do and answer your question, Carol. We won't know until we get a, the bids back from the contractors how much that will take us. But Kalen can uh, walk through what our goals would be in this immediate exercise and what we're hoping to get done. And by, excuse me, and by what we propose to do, I think, are you meaning the $25,000 worth? That's correct. Of Just the $25,000 immediate um, security and safety type of work. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Everybody can hear me okay? Um, the 25000 the report recommends that we fence off the, the middle and eastern portions of the park. So we would be putting chain link fence in these areas here to block access to these areas. Hey, look, where, where is Shore Road and where is the ocean? I'm oh, sorry, the ocean is on the back side. Shore Road's on the front side. Down here. Okay. Um, there's a hole down here and the back entrance here. Uh, we, here. For proposing the use of a, of a black vinyl chain link fence, so it's, it's not just a galvanized chain link fence. As Steve said, uh, we won't know exactly how far we can go beyond this um, until we get the bids back from the contractors. There's some custom fence work that's going to be required in here. Um, as you can see in the photos, um, some of the, the old carriage doors are round and getting some fencing in there that looks fairly nice. It's, uh, it's going to take some custom fencing. The next part is uh, that I recommend is that we start with the masonry right above the main door. Uh, the rubble stone, which was part of the socket of the, of the roof structure, um, is coming apart badly here, and this is a main pedestrian way through here, and the same on the back side. And any, any monies beyond that uh, just would continue on, on repla replacing the uh, Type 1, rebuilding the Type 1 mortar there. Okay, and that would basically use up to 25000 Yes. Okay. Any further questions? And, and the timing on that would be this fall? Yes, if the mortar typically doesn't drive, uh, doesn't cure below 50 degrees, and so we need to do it, get it in there rather quickly. Any further questions? Councilor Moore? I, I just wanted to make a point for the uh, viewing public that no additional property tax dollars would need to be allocated for this, but it comes out of the uh, Fort Williams Capital Fund that already exists. One question? Yes. Um, I may not, I, I acknowledge, I have to admit that I was partially reading a section of the report while you were speaking, so I was listening with one ear instead of both. So, but how much of the cost would be allocated to fencing alone? Um, I really shouldn't guess before the bids come in, but I'm. Uh, it might be as much as 10 to 10 to 12, 14,000, something like that. Again, I'm going to like to wait for the bids to come in. The black vinyl fencing is a little more expensive, and I'd like to meet with a couple contractors out there to look at the custom work. Oftentimes, they'll have ideas which are uh, um, you know, can save us some money. Would would that expense alone be sufficient, in your opinion, to keep people out of the danger zone? Yes, and the, my reason for saying yes is that the chain link fence that's been put up to uh, guard the, what I believe was the stairwell shaft earlier is, is, uh, is been fairly effective. The, um, people have, have burrowed underneath it, but that appears to be the only access to that area. And so the chain link fence has been effective. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, I could offer some of the higher windows we won't have chain link over, so if somebody chooses to scale the wall and jump in, I have a question. So, Councillor Backer was saying the, the chain link fence was a safety issue, but then you mentioned doing the uh, repairing where the soffit rubble wall was um, falling apart above the main entrance. Isn't 
and I presume that would be the balance of the 25 if the fence was 13 or 14 or whatever. So isn't that a safety issue, didn't you say? I think, I believe, based on our estimates, that we can repair the area directly above the entrances yeah. and make that safe so there's no stones falling down directly in front of the entrances. And that, in some sign, um, would probably take up the 25000 So the full 25000 would be for safety-related expenditures? Okay, thank you. Yeah. So maybe just to clarify Councilor Swift-Kayata's question, so the fencing will not keep people away from the danger zone in front of the entrance where there is the potential for falling stone, is that correct? You mean here? Yeah. Y yes. Um, can I make an offer? At the, at the advisory committee meeting, the, the intent was to keep a portion of the mansion open and the, where we believe these areas can be fixed and shored up, felt that it was safe enough to... The, the real rubble, the, the real problems with the stone falling out are in these areas here. So fixing the stone above the entrance is driven by a desire to want to keep access open to a portion of the mansion? Uh, I think essentially we wanted to maintain, right now there's a fence right here and you can enter this area here, but there's actually a level change, an elevation change. So the idea of the fencing would be to cordon off access to these areas, but still allow entrance into the main section, A, which is where most people go in. But the idea of the fencing was to uh, prohibit people from, from getting into these areas. Once we do the work over the doorway, you know, it would be much safer to go in the entrance of the building. So does that answer your question? Or? I think so. Um, can I comment further? Yes, go right ahead. I mean, my concern is I have no idea where we're going with the long-term repair, uh, maintenance, um, and preservation mm -hmm. of the mansion. I see the numbers in here. They're very large. Um, when it comes down to a balancing of needs, short-term and long-term, I don't know where we'll come down in terms of committing the funds required to preserve the mansion. I don't know where town sentiment will be on how attached people are to the historic significance of the mansion. But if a decision is made not to have it preserved long term, I'm just wondering whether we want to spend as few dollars as possible in the short term for safety purposes before committing any more than necessary. And that's the only reason I'm asking about it. Obviously, I want to make sure that short-term safety concerns are addressed in whatever way they should be. Um, I don't want to speak for the full Women's Advisory Commission, but they've identified the mansion as, as uh, one of their priorities, priorities as far as preservation of buildings and structures in the park. We've always, I've always used the terminology, we've been maintaining it as a historical ruin, which means we've been really doing nothing to it. Uh, but we really have a choice. We either need to cordon off the entrances and really limit access completely or start addressing the immediate safety concerns. We're just hearing from a liability standpoint that, especially this main entrance, that we're opening ourselves up if we continue to allow access to it. So, you know, option B would be to restrict access completely. Uh, so we need to do something. And it's been identified, and John can speak to this, uh, when they prioritized their goals uh, last year, the mansion rated very highly. And uh, maybe John would like to speak to this, but that's well, a little background on it. It sounds like, based on the cost of the fencing, which is, which is relatively high, that the cost of doing the fencing and doing the repair that you proposed would not be significantly different than fencing off the entire thing. That's possible. So it's probably not an issue worth pursuing to any great degree in my mind. So now that I understand the issues, I'm fine from a safety standpoint of letting them do exactly what's proposed in the short term, as opposed to what I was mulling over in my own mind was, should we just be fencing off the whole thing right now right. until we make a decision? But I think the cost differential will be minimal. Okay. That, that was So we felt that leaving the access to this area would continue the use of the management. Excuse me. Could you just introduce yourself for the sake of John Snowden, people watching? John Snowden, one of the, the uh, Portland Advisory Commission members. 
Thank you. Uh, so you're absolutely correct. That's this was a short-term issue for us. We haven't come to the realization of what we want to do with it either at this point, but we felt we needed to address these sorts of issues. You're absolutely correct. So what, if I could just clarify for myself, so what I'm hearing is that basically the cost, there's not much of a difference in cost between fencing <coughs> off the big room on the left versus fixing the, the wall, the rubble over those two entrances is basically about the same cost. Okay. So, so our choice would be um, to deal with the safety issues by fencing the whole thing or by fencing part of it and fixing those two arches. Are there other comments or questions? Is Dr. this Fritz? A, um, our main opportunity to ask the engineers questions? Uh, will they I think attend the workshop? I think, we'll, I hope we will, if no one else makes it, I will make a motion to re, um, refer this report to a workshop, but that's the subsequent motion. We seem to have broken them out into three separate ones. So I don't think it will be our... But the engineers would do this. I would the, the, the hope, I hope so. if, if I might, Madam Chairman, the hope is that the November Town Council workshop could occur at Fort Williams Park at which you would discuss re, uh, issue, current issues relating to Fort Williams, including this, you, you, you might do, have the meeting start before dark. And then, <laughs> oh, the, then there would be a meeting at Portland Headlight <laughs> at which the, new, the trustees of, of Portland Headlight uh, would also meet uh, that evening to go over some pending issues uh, on the Lighthouse, relating to the Lighthouse. Thank you for that clarification. Are there other questions about this particular motion, which is authorizing that the immediate safety issues to be, uh, be addressed using the previously allocated funds from the Fort Williams Capital Fund up to, I think it was up to $25,000 is what the manager mentioned. Any other questions on that or discussion? Then let's move that question. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Um, and then, do I hear a motion for the third part about referring the report to a workshop? So hopefully, moved. hopefully in Second. November. Shall we plan it for no, the mm. November workshop? No, Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Great. Thank you very much. Um, that takes care of the regular agenda. This is another opportunity for citizens uh, to discuss items not on the agenda. Is there anything? If there's any citizen who would like to come forward, please do so. Seeing none, um, I want to, before we adjourn, I want to mention that we will be having a brief finance committee meeting immediately following this meeting. We'll be up in the, the conference room, or we might do it here. The manager is just going to um, give us an update on the municipal budget. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'm sorry. One, one quick item for the public that's watching tonight. Uh, as a matter of public information, the League of Women Voters is holding a candidates night uh, two weeks from tonight on October 27th here in the Town Council Chamber. I believe it starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, so all those that are interested in hearing the different candidates for all the different mm -hmm. positions uh, answer some questions, please tune in. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Speed things along, David. Do you want to go?